he is the one who makes the laws. He is the one that, it, it's said in the Matthew, Mark and Luke, that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Yeah. So if he's the Lord of the Sabbath, then what happens there is up to him to decide how the Sabbath should be spent. Now, let's, let's open up the word. And um, it doesn't give us the freedom to do whatever we like. You know, the one thing I find today is that um, that people feel that you know you can you can just not honour God in any way whatsoever. They don't even want to really um, admit that God is the the one who made us. He. I put on. Um, on Facebook yesterday, just the reality that 40 years ago they didn't have any idea about ultrasounds. Yeah. They had no idea about uh, what happens with a baby when it's conceived. But medical science now shows that right from conception, the babe is has got all the ingredients. And I was looking at. at the ligaments this morning, old and, you know, <laughs> ageing sort of skin and everything. But I was thinking this was once a, a, a one cell that God put together everything in that cell mm. that now grows to someone who mm. is getting older by the day, uh, more frail by the day. And yet, really, it's a miracle. Mm. It's an amazing miracle. And the thing that struck me with the, the, the science of it today is that the EEG is done about 24 days and it shows that the baby is alive. And at, uh, at, at that time, the, the electrical EEG, the electroencephalogram, it shows that the baby is alive right at that moment. Mm. And yet, when a person, say, hit the pole, I was taken to hospital and they do an EEG and they find that there's no brain waves there that they would counter that person's brain dead and they could harvest the organs if the person's a, a, a donor because they're no longer alive according to medical science. Now the, the inconsistency that I saw was if medical science sees that uh, a person who is brain dead can be just mm. have life supports taken off. Why do they actually kill an unborn baby who has life signs, who has EEG, who is going to grow in the next 12 weeks where sometimes the, the mother isn't even aware of the growth of the baby within the womb? Mm. It, do, it starts kicking, it starts doing all those things uh, and yet people want to deny it. And, and yet this is done behind closed doors, mm. in clinics, in hospitals. Since the Roe versus Wade case, mm. about 55 million babies have been mm. killed in America. How many, only God would know, worldwide. In Australia we have 100,000 each year that are killed that are just murdered in the womb. And yet, most people, most churches really don't care about it. I'm getting more um, alive to the fact that the church needs to wake up and stand and speak to the political system of our day. Not that I have any faith in the political system. Mm. That's another matter. We just had an election. But the, um, the reality is that we have we, we live in a world that wants to ignore God as creator. God is the wonderful maker of, the, of us. Mm. Every cell in our body requires him. And uh, as, as much as the surgeons and everything, uh, we, we had one, um, one doctor that said, look, they can only do 10%. It's God that does the 90%. <laughs> Sabbath. <laughs> Sabbath. Matthew 12, 8. Let's look at it. <laughs> and the point I want to make today is that um, 
the commandments, the Ten Commandments, are there. Thou shalt have no other gods before you. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. That's the one that Jesus did not endorse as such. But he fulfilled it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's the brilliant part. Mm-hmm. Honour your father and your mother still is alive today. Yeah. Yeah. So that you might if live you do long. that, you live a long life. Yeah. You live long, <laughs> yeah. long in the land. Yeah. And uh, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. He didn't alter any of those. And, uh, but here, here when we start looking at this in detail, um, we look at Matthew 12, 8. And uh, like I said before, there are uh, three times this is mentioned in the New Testament. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. It's also mentioned in Mark 2, 28. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Luke 6, 5. And he said unto them that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Now we have many examples of the disciples where, and the Pharisees that said, hey, you know, don't do this on the Sabbath. Don't, and, and Jesus had the answer. And this is where we get, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. We have a man with a withered hand. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. We have a woman bound for 18 years, healed on the Sabbath. And he gives a reply, look, even if you have a donkey that falls into a ditch, why would you let that donkey stay in there on the Sabbath? Because you would get it out. But this woman who has been bound these 18 years, you want her to still be bound? I like this one, you know, where he made clay and uh, opened the blind eyes on the Sabbath. And, mm-hmm. and uh, they said, no, do your miracle some other day. This is the religious attitude where people want to have. Now, we have, and we have the disciples plucking the ears of corn on the Sabbath day. Each time, Jesus had a response. Mm. They said, "Don't you realise that day that went into the mm. into the uh, place where it's only right for the priest to eat that bread, mm. the show bread, mm. and yet he still could have that, and he was not bound and corrected for it because that was what was right for him at that time. Because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath." In Colossians 2.16, I find, is the one that stands out for me the most. So many people want to live where the law becomes paramount. And they really come into a place. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest is what the world needs today. You know, the, the, the whole aspect of rest is a Sabbath. Jesus is the one who gives us our Mm. rest Mm. so that he is the Lord of the Sabbath he has not he's fulfilled that he's shown that he is the one who who is to be followed because in the midst of all the things in his in his earthly ministry (coughs) according to the Pharisees he broke the law each time he broke the law as soon as, he, as soon as they saw the disciples crumbling the, the grain in their hands. And as soon as they, so he, he healed that blind man. As soon as he said to the, the person by the pool of Bethesda, Arise, yeah. take up your bed and walk. Yeah. They come back and say, It's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath. 
And this is the logic of, of a religious mind. He didn't say, it's okay to commit adultery now. It's okay to covet your neighbour's wife. It's okay to lie. It's okay to cheat. It's okay to steal. It's okay to murder. But we see that, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day, is still in a place where mm. even though Jesus is our rest, our rest is every day. And we are, because we belong to Him, because we've been bought with a price, because He owns us 100%. It, it's silly. Sometimes I hear people say, I'll give my life to you again. Why didn't you give it to Him the first time? You know? If, if you have to give it to Him again, you've taken it back at some stage. Mm. If, if He is the one who is the Lord of your life, mm. then you live for Him day by day. So He's your rest every day. And consequently, He is the Lord of the Sabbath, Lord of your rest, and we don't do anything, no matter what day it is. Mm. I mean, it's great that we can gather together on the Sunday. Mm. It's great that we can gather together on Tuesday. It's great that we can gather together on that Friday, or any day of the week. Mm. But we don't make a doctrine of it. We don't come back and say, well, you can't be one of us unless you mm. obey the meeting of everyone here on a Monday. Mm. You know, you, man can make those rules. Mm. Man can stipulate so many things that become instituted and they become very rapidly a, a habit that people do, that they rely on that more than the one who is the Lord of their life. And uh, so today I, I thought, well, um, particularly with, with Luke, uh, he's been challenged with the, so many things about the Seventh-day Adventist. He's now passed through that. Mm. But it's, it's so much is in that path where, where we can just simply stand firm according to the Word. And people tell us, well, let me teach you the word type of thing. If you don't keep the Sabbath and it's a, it's a Saturday, I, I learned something, I've been learning Hebrew, I'm going to have to let it go for a while. And I often wondered when the Hebrew day started. Because in different parts of the world, obviously it would be different. 6 a.m. isn't it? No. No, interestingly enough. I always thought it was 6 p.m. on the Friday night. Now the seventh day then has had a big blue, big split because some of them said 6 p.m., some of them said 7 p.m. I thought, but I learned from this Hebrew course, it's when the first three stars appear on the Friday night that the Sabbath begins. Now that deals with all of the stuff about daylight saving. Mm -hmm. you, have the, you have the rabbis there that will look out and, and they will say, there's the three stars that you can see. I don't know what they do about it over a cloudy day. That's my, that's my. <laughs> they find out the mate where it's not cloudy. <laughs> but you can see how people can get tied up mm. with that. Um, it, it's making it so that, well, we've got to do it right. And yet, God has intended us to be a people that live in the freedom that Christ gives us. But that freedom isn't a license to do whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. In Romans 6 it says, Do we keep on sinning? That grace my abound? God forbid. Mm -hmm. God forbid. And, uh, and so, it, it's very liberating. But so many people don't know how to live in, in that. Because there are so many questions out there today in the Word that we're always discovering the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. That means we don't know all the truth now. Mm -hmm. But we can learn as the Holy Spirit teaches us. And that is a wonderful, a wonderful gift mm -hmm. that God's given us. Mm -hmm. That each day, each moment, um, there can be things that, I'm learning stuff now that I thought I knew years back. You know, when you're mm. out there and you think, but I get surprised by the 
the, the simplicity of the revelation that he gives. You know, the fact that all of our faith hinges around the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so many people want to talk about other things. But Jesus lived, Jesus died, mm -hmm. Jesus was buried, three days later he rose again from the dead. Yes. And Jesus is coming back again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, it's, in, it's in between time. I'm talking to Gideon this morning, had a long conversation with him. And he says that, that the difficulties of this time is nothing to be compared. Yes. With which we've got God has got for us in the future. But he's hoping too that uh, this time passes. And it will. It will. But yeah, the, well. the beauty of it is in everything. Mm. It doesn't say when you mm. when you've got it going well no. that you give thanks. It says in everything give thanks. give thanks. I don't give thanks for everything. I don't give mm. thanks for what the devil will do. Mm. I don't thank the devil. Uh, I, I say in everything. I say God, you're working in me. Mm. You're shaping me like that. That one says, yeah. He's the Potter. Mm. He's shaping us to be the very image that is going to glorify him forever. Amen.